presence, knowing, Lord, that this is the last hour, that the gospel is going forth, this is the last age. Brother Brown has said, I'm in my evening time, and certainly let us know the time was running out, literally, as far as equating it to eternity and what has already gone before time literally has run out. It's just staggering into the last few footsteps until the resurrection. And we pray, Lord, that as this time approaches, really right here, breaking upon us, that we'll be strong in thee, Lord, the power of thy might, and uh, taking thy grace, Lord, in all ways in the very lives we now live, so that we might be glorified, Lord, and we in our turn glorified as that great hour approaches. Help us in our studies tonight, Lord. Guide us. May there be no carelessness, Lord. May there be no taking of anything, Lord, we ought not to take. But may we just be very, very right in this word tonight, Lord, and very one. So help our thoughts now as we give them over to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And you may be seated. <coughs> now, <coughs> I don't think we'll take uh, too much time tonight to get very far into the message of the token. But in our studies thus far, I have... That I presented to you, or we've gone into, you, I've taken my time to present my understanding to you of this message of the token that Brother Branham is speaking of number one. He's speaking to of the individual believer's personal token, which is the baptism with the Holy Ghost. Now you mustn't ever forget that, because he's dealing with each person who must be full of the Holy Spirit, be part of that bride. Number two, the Holy Spirit himself coming to the church. Not to the individual, but to all members collectively. <clears throat> now, there are two things there that I'm afraid are not understood by many people. They do understand the first one, that uh, there is such a thing as a personal baptism with the Holy Ghost. By one spirit, they all baptized into one body. That's very true. But to understand the Holy Spirit coming to the church at this time is something that they don't seem to understand. Now, on page... Uh, 10 in the fourth paragraph oh we are living in the shadows and the wrath is ready to strike and God is requiring a token that you yourself have received his token the Holy Ghost now that's what he said we're living in the shadows the wrath is all ready to strike and God is requiring a token that you yourself have received his token the Holy Ghost and of course if you haven't received it he's, he's demanding that you do it is the only way and the only sign that God will ever pass because it is the literal life of Jesus Christ returned back into the believer. <clears throat> the literal life turned back. Now, we could actually pause there and go into some thoughts, but I'll just let that go. Now, in desperation for the second point, on page 5, Brother Brandon says, And now the entire Holy Spirit visits the church, making God in human flesh as he did before Sodom, the burning there, which was a type. Now, you can't bypass that one. <clears throat> Evidently, the entire Holy Spirit uh, had not visited the church as he's visiting now. If he had, which is fine, that would be an Ephesian church age, the very first church age. <clears throat> but you'll notice he says, the entire Holy Spirit. Then on page 19, we haven't got that far yet, but I'll just skip over to it in the, uh, about the second paragraph. What is sin? Unbelief. You disbelieve the message. You disbelieve the word. Now, you can take the word there as logos, which would be God manifesting himself, as we see there in signs and wonders and so on, proving himself by the word. Or you can just take it to be the literal word itself. It was a word of promise for this hour, and it has become a message. And the message, of course, is the word of promise for this hour. Now, he said, you've disbelieved the message, you've disbelieved the word. Actually, they disbelieve both. Let's put it down there. You've disbelieved the witness of the token itself when it has identified itself in the midst of us. And you have disbelieved that. No matter how much you disbelieve it, <clears throat> it has got to be applied. <clears throat> so you see right there, you're noticing that, that Brother Brown was speaking of the person of the Holy Spirit itself or himself, and then he's speaking of the relationship of that Holy Spirit to each individual as well as the church and each individual must be baptized of that spirit even as the church must have the visitation of that baptizer. Now you see that last word, last sentence or part was the catch. <clears throat> see the thought is well he's always been with us. So uh, 
it's like Brother Brown has said about a message. If, if, if uh, there's going to be a message given, it won't be the same old tired message. Amen. Like he said, if there's a real genuine healing revival, uh, then there's got to be a new message, not a new patch on an old garment. Because he said, what good would it be for God to repeat the thing you already know? Why would he do this if there wasn't something there that you hadn't had? Now, you know that that's scriptural. Amen. That's just the way it goes. <clears throat> All right? Now, you can see that what we've said here is absolutely Ephesians 1. Now, you know that's my... That's, I never get away from Ephesians 1. I'm not uh, now and when I die and when I resurrect. Right, no. However I come up, it's just, there it is. Because that's the word of God doesn't pass away, even though it's fulfilled in this respect, because we're going to be that fulfilled word going on. Now he said here, In whom you also you trusted, after that you heard the word of faith, that's verse 13, the first chapter of Ephesians. <clears throat> the gospel of your salvation, whom also after you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, the down payment or the token, of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now it tells you that what you got is going to hold you instead, that is, is going to stand there for you as your guarantee, as a witness, as a sign, as a token, assurance. It's going to stand there until your body is redeemed, that you're glorified. Now that's what he's telling you. Now notice, this church was started in, in Acts 19 under Paul. Brother Branham will go into that, so just let it lie there. <clears throat> but what I want to bring out is that they had received the Holy Ghost. And notch what he says, Wherefore also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now that's not the earnest. That's not the token that guarantees you your personal resurrection. This is a visitation to the church. Something else to the church, though, goes to each individual at the time that this is given. What is given? Not the Holy Spirit given to the individuals over again, <clears throat> but a revelation. Amen. Because that's what he's sent for. He's not sent here to put you into the bride. Up here, he already has got you in the bride. So this is to those who are in the bride. They're showing forth that love and that excellence. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. It doesn't stop there. But it says, What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ? Now that's not Christ, that's God. I'm talking now the anointed man. <clears throat> the flesh, the word becoming flesh. See? Now, he tells you here, <clears throat> that power which God wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand. Now, I know there's only one spirit, but when you talk about one spirit, you've got to talk about one God and his Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. He's three offices. He's Son of Man, Son of David, Son of God. Three again. Mm -hmm. And there's more. The lily of the valley. He's the king of kings. The Lord of lords. He's the I am. The truth, the way. He's all of these things, but he's one person. <clears throat> so therefore, now you have an adaptation of God in his plan of redemption. He seals you in by a modicum, a little tiny bit of his spirit, you know, <clears throat> the light. I'll maybe describe it later on again. Then he himself comes on the scene. And you notice it's that power that he wrought when he raised Jesus from the dead comes forth after this revelation. Amen. See? And sent him in his own right hand. So the same thing happens to us. Revelation. Resurrection. Rapture. Shout. Voice. Trumpet. <clears throat> now people can do what they want with that. As I've said before, go to your theologians and see what they say about this. They haven't got the answer. I'm no theologian, but I'm a far better theologian than any theologian ever listened to the first century. Why? Because Brother Branham taught us. Amen. Amen. No credit of mine, no credit of yours. If you know anything, I know anything. <clears throat> but, if, but God sent a messenger. Amen. They, they don't want the messenger. They don't want the message. They want the Holy Ghost. Amen. But they'll claim they got the Holy Ghost. You see? Now, if that's what you've got to watch about this message. There's a blend in here where these run together, and yet they're separate. And then he brings them right together. You say, while well, he's looking back. And you watch, he's looking right at this minute. And 
you think he's looking way down there? Back somewhere. He's talking right now. He's making a comparison. So you've got your watch. And I'm not supposed to hear as your watchdog, so to speak, or someone watching over you. <clears throat> but I'm trying to bring this to your attention. All right. What we saw here then, Brother Brown, is speaking in terms of the literal baptism with the Holy Ghost to the individual, for the individual, upon the individual. Now the fullness of the Holy Spirit comes into the church, and he types it as God in human flesh as he did before Sodom. Now God himself made a body that he came down in and appeared as a man amongst three men, two other men, three altogether, to Abraham. <clears throat> then Sodom burned. Now, you notice that William Branham took the role in the drama as though he were God himself, which he was not, but he was a vicar. Now look, let's hit the vicar. Everybody is so up against the Catholic people, they don't know left hand from a right foot and split beans from buttermilk or whatever Jack Bell would try to tell you. <laughs> All they can do is rant and rave about the vicar of Christ, vicar of Christ, vicar of Christ. I'm going to tell you something, that word is legitimate. Because it means instead of. And Paul even reduces you and me. He said we're ambassadors instead of Jesus Christ. That makes us vicars. <clears throat> so, G. Peter stood there in the day of Pentecost as a vicar. Now the Catholics are mixed up there. Every, every church age has been a vicar. Paul was the first vicar. Because it's under the, under the <clears throat> messenger, which is in the church of, in Ephesus. These things. And then he says... He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And those people couldn't hear one single solitary thing God or any spirit was saying outside of Paul. Amen. So Paul was the Holy Ghost of the people. Amen. He was the vicar of Christ right. in the real, true, wonderful, glorious sense Hallelujah. that only God could confer upon anybody. And then you watch his department, his demeanor. Oh, was he out there boasting and flabbergasting the people how great belly he was and mincing around and tippy-toeing and pulling all kinds of evangelistic stunts. Oh, I hope you're getting what I'm saying, brother. That man was so solid, gold, so pure. There wasn't one bit of sham in him. There was nothing but Christ. Amen. Amen. Of course, that's the way we should be. By the grace of God, Amen. we will be before we get out of here. Something will happen somewhere down the road. <clears throat> but that man was real. And then look at Arrhenius. See? And there was, there was Martin and Columba. We never saw the sterling qualities. We couldn't. Because, you see, the measure of the Holy Ghost in the Word was at one. And there was less and less. <clears throat> and as it begins to come back, there's more and more. Until in this hour, certainly you come right back to where there was a victor like Paul. You'd have to. <clears throat> You'd have to have something of that stature. So he wants you to understand this very, very carefully. <clears throat> Brother Brown, what he was saying here. Now, we also want to remember that Brother Branham emphatically warned us that though we might be well aware of the Holy Spirit, we may fail to be baptized of Him. Now that can happen so easy. <clears throat> you know, it's something like when Jesus uh, showed Himself and they believed not for joy. You know, you can get carried away with the ministry and carried away with what is going on and many things until you just fail to realize that the impact doesn't lie in what is manifested, but in what is the manifester of what is manifested. Amen. <clears throat> and I'm afraid that's what Brother Brown is saying here. He said you could you could well fail to be baptized even though you know he's here. We might very well accept his presence, but not his infilling us. Now the majority accept the infilling, but can't accept his presence, then how full can they be? Now look, we're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings because that's not the issue. <clears throat> That's not the issue at all. The issue is simply the Word of God. How does it work within the framework? What is it all about? See? All right. And further to that, <clears throat> he mentioned that this token could only come at this hour of the last church age with the last messenger and the last message. Now, <clears throat> look. If the Holy Spirit can only come at this hour and you don't understand and believe that's different from the baptism with the Holy Ghost. So it's a precise <clears throat> visitation of the fullness. As Brother Brown has said, there's something wrong with your thinking. Because anybody knows by one spirit are you baptized into one body and you must be born again. And the born again experience is a baptism with the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
You say, well, maybe, maybe all through the ages they weren't getting born again. Well, throw your Bible in the gutter. <laughs> Come on, you can't have your... You, look, foolish is foolish and stupid is stupid. But you can't blame God. Amen. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now make up your mind. <clears throat> see, there's something wrong somewhere. Yeah, all right. This token could only come at the last hour, the evening time. He said, this token. Now, let us not fail to emphasize the thrust of this message, even as Brother Brown does. Here is the thrust. All seven church ages have looked forward to this hour, which is the hour of the return of the pillar of fire. Now, see, so just a minute. I, I don't know they ever read anywhere anybody looked at that pillar of fire. Well, just a minute, brother, sister. Maybe they didn't know it would come in the pillar of fire any more than <clears throat> some, some of your husband or his boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever was going to be going to give you a nice little present that you wanted. <clears throat> you didn't know how it was going to come to UPS or mail and drop to the door by him or her or whatever it is, and how it's going to be wrapped up. But you were going to get a present. <clears throat> so they knew there was going to be a return. Now, they didn't understand it. That involved a mystery. It could only be taken care of in the last hour. But they waited for that pillar of fire, not knowing perhaps it was the pillar of fire, and yet those great men, without preaching it, or their sermons caught, could have said the pillar of fire will return. Christ in his fullness amongst us has identified himself to us. <clears throat> now remember, before Sodom, there was that one in flesh, and Brother Branham, being that faithful vicar, did exactly what God did, demonstrating and showing how God could, in a human flesh, in a body, <clears throat> could stand outside that tent, Sarah behind him, and read her heart note perfectly. See? Yeah. All right, now God, God amongst us in his fullness. <clears throat> now, Christ in his fullness has a, ha, amongst us has identified himself to us even to the point where his picture, both sides here, were taken. <clears throat> we know who he is, even as Paul knew. The Lord Jesus Christ of Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, day, and forever, which is Jehovah. That's why the Jesus of the New Testament has to act like the Jehovah of the Old Testament because he's proving the point of Jesus and one God and water baptism. See, understand, it was Jehovah back there. It's Jehovah now. Yeah, Not two Jehovahs, one Jehovah. See? <clears throat> Brother Branham mentioned that time the Father, but now, now as son. <clears throat> the reason he's here is to lead us out of Babylon and into the millennium. But even as God was with Israel, now watch, even as God personally, in the pillar of fire and manifested, was with Israel to lead them out of Egypt and into the promised land to fulfill his covenant with Abraham of Genesis 15, 13, 14, which was, I'm going to let your people go to captivity. 400 years, they'll be evil and treated, but I'll bring them up with a high hand. Bring them right back here. All right. Even as God was with Israel in the pillar of fire. That's God, period. We know that. <clears throat> to lead them out of Egypt into the promised land, to fulfill his covenant with Abraham, he yet demanded a token of them, in addition to his presence. Now watch it. To get the understanding Brother Branham wanted to have. <clears throat> God said, I'm going to do it. And God's bound to do it. Didn't tell him how. <clears throat> when the time come, he did it. Now, to get him out of there, so they wouldn't be visited by death, which was in the land, they had to have a token. Amen. So I want you to notice something here. Presence plus token. Amen. The Amen. person of God plus a token demanded of God. See? Follow? <clears throat> in addition to his presence. Thus today, God demands the token of his own life in the believer. God's presence in the pillar of fire can and will deliver his bride into the millennium. <clears throat> but every bride member must be full of Christ's spirit. Amen. By one spirit you baptize into one body. 
If any man are not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And of course, many, many scriptures, <clears throat> the one we like the best of all, epitomize it. Ephesians 1, 13, 14. Now, so, today God demands a token of his own life in the believer. God's presence in the pillar of fire can and will deliver his bride to the millennium. But every bride member must be full of the Holy Spirit, even as every Israelite <clears throat> had to have blood upon the doorpost of his house. Amen. <clears throat> they had to have it. They didn't make it. Each member has to have the Holy Ghost. Israel as a nation was completely sealed in by God, separated and sealed away from Egypt and her power. And though she suffered physically, there is no record of death amongst them. I don't know one place where it said they killed them. <clears throat> there might have been some, but I don't know a record. Not saying we can't die at this hour. I'm just telling you something here. That life is in the air, not dead. All right? They suffered. Instead, but instead, the plague of death struck the Egyptians, even as the second death will now strike in this hour. <clears throat> Today, each member of the bride must be spirit-filled. Each member sealed in. And the pillar of fire has taken headship over all of her, the whole body. Brother Brandon said, we're back to headship. And he said, oh, well, how do denominations fade away? There's no big ones amongst, no little ones. <clears throat> There's no popes, no bishops, no cardinals, no, no uh, district presbyters. Now they can be presbyters, the elders, but not district presbyters. <clears throat> no bishops and so on. God himself by a prophet has confirmed his promise of a rapture. That's deliverance. He has delivered his own word for the hour and will soon raise the dead and take a bride up to the wedding supper. The price of redemption <clears throat> is completely paid. The token that gives us passage is available and must be obtained from God and presented at this hour. We are only to believe it and receive it, and an abundant entrance <clears throat> is ours for the taking, or the asking, or the moving into it. Now, you can see this message is already a part of the rapture. <clears throat> Before Brother Brown preached the rapture, you can see this was a part of it. What he did with the rapture, he epitomized everything that he said concerning his ministry and what was going on. <clears throat> now, before we turn to page 12 and paragraph 8, we want to keep costly in mind Brother Brown's reference to Israel requiring the token of the blood, which today is replaced by the token of the Holy Spirit. And this is a message for this hour, the midnight hour, the going in. <clears throat> it doesn't belong to Pentecost, Brother Citron. If you think it does, you're entirely wrong. You missed the point. <clears throat> if you think this belongs to Wesley, you're wrong. It's not that the Pentecostals do not have the Holy Spirit or did not have the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> it's not that the Methodists were not born again. <clears throat> it is not that the Lutherans were not born again and so on. That's true. They were born again. But when he said you Lutherans potentially had the Holy Ghost, you Wesley potentially had the Holy Ghost, and you meant that potentially had the Holy Ghost. He was speaking of the person Amen. of Almighty God in the form of the Holy Spirit in the pillar of fire. <clears throat> and that's the appearing. Amen. But who wants to believe it? Amen. All right? For a little while. We'll go back to page 12, paragraph 8. Start. <clears throat> now the Spirit, this hour, itself is the token. The Holy Spirit itself is the token, not the blood. Now, the blood was a chemistry or chemicals which were visible. Now, the point is, how visible is it if you have the Holy Spirit? The visibility is nil. Amen. There has to have been some action come out of you to, to, to demonstrate the Holy Spirit is there. Amen. How much demonstration can there be? There can be a lot of it. Because you can be anointed with the true power of the Holy Spirit and have gifts and signs and wonders and many virtues and all and be just as as a big a radical away from God as, as uh, Judas was. <clears throat> you could be a Balaam. Prophesy ever so correctly. You could do a lot of things and be entirely gone. But we're talking now of something far greater. He said, for the very spirit itself is the token. Not something that's being done now. Although that goes without saying. The Holy Spirit itself is the token, not the blood. The blood was shed at Calvary, that is true. But the blood, as far as this, went back to the elements <coughs> from whence it came, from the food he lived on. Well, there's many things people say about the blood. 
Then he carried it up to the heavens. Because the Bible said the heavens must be purified by a better blood than the blood of bulls and goats. <clears throat> also dropped upon the ground to purify the earth. Signifying the earth would come forth in its, private, its resurrection in due time. Also the earth the dropped upon the earth signifying that we could come back with redeemed bodies. Because that's exactly what we will be. It will be the things which God formed our bodies out of <clears throat> that they're going to come back to. But they won't be the same bodies. They'll be glorified bodies. But he bring it back in the dust and the ashes or whatsoever. <clears throat> now it says here, the blood in his veins dropped out upon the earth and it disintegrated. Did it all? I don't know. But whichever way you look at it, and I believe exactly what he said here, he tried to make a point that it's not the blood, but there's something to do with the blood. Amen. You see? Amen. All right. <clears throat> but you see, inside that blood cell was a light. That's what he's talking about. See? So that's, he's not denigrating the blood. He's not trying to put it to a lower standard. <clears throat> but he's trying to show you something here. No matter how much you revere what you are standing on, if a message comes vindicated by a man of God, you had better leave what you're standing on. Amen. Unless Amen. it's been vindicated by the prophet of that man that God sent. Amen. Now you tell me the churches that can do that. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> Every church comes out and said, now we came out because... Of new light. We and our and our fathers came out, our parents, if they were parents, we came out because there was light presented and they didn't want it. But every time you watch, listen, don't you understand what Jesus said to those Pharisees? He said, You you say now, if we'd been living back there, we wouldn't have killed the prophets and put them in jails and done everything. He said, Your own confession proved you've got the same blood and the same spirit. Your murder is just like there. They oh no, no, no. Look at these bunch. Look, modern twentieth century Levi. Not too modern, but still twentieth century. I've heard them say it. You get it? I heard them say it. I was there when it was said by the big mogul up there in Canada. And he said, we better be careful. <clears throat> light came to the message through Pentecost. They turned it down. And if further light should come, let us be careful. We don't turn it down. They turned down the oneness of the Godhead and baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, just like that. <clears throat> I'm not trying to throw stink bombs or smoke bombs, but the man's dead by now. Reverend George R. Upton must be dead by now. If he isn't, that's fine with me. <clears throat> Live as long as he wants or as long as God wants him. But he's the man that said it. Where is Pentecost today? <clears throat> See? That's the thing right now that's very interesting. <clears throat> All right. Now, going back. But you see, inside that blood cell was a light that started the blood cell to moving. <clears throat> now, he's telling you there's something behind that blood. Amen. There was a light in the blood. Say, look. <clears throat> it's like... Um, the Bible teaching in Genesis 1, let the earth bring forth the creatures, the moving creatures, the seed bring forth the creatures. Well, you know the earth didn't do it. You know the seed didn't do it. Then the word of God tells you later, God formed them. <clears throat> See? What did he do? The spirits were there like the spirit of Adam was there to be clothed. It was there and God clothed them. <clears throat> now, there is <clears throat> a life, and that life has to have a clothing on it. And there is a life that's in the blood. Amen. Because that's associated to the fact of bringing the food. That's what Brother Brown said here. The food <clears throat> it was there. See, now the blood could go anywhere that God chose to put it. See, just, that wouldn't matter too much. That's what people appall me when they worry about the blood on the mercy or altar mercy. Look, the blood has been shed. Amen. And if you're full of the Holy Ghost, you leave it all to God. So what would it matter how God, what God did with the blood or how he was predisposed to dispose of it if indeed he did? There's a life that counts. Yes. Hallelujah. See, that's the thing you're looking at. <clears throat> now let's go a little further. There's a life that made that blood start moving. There's a life in there. Hard to understand, but it's still there. If it wasn't, the chemistry had no life in it itself. That's right. There's no life in, in, the, in the food in these things you eat. <clears throat> you eat a piece of bread. What life is there there? There's nourishment there. You eat a piece of steak, if it's good steak. Something good to eat. Vegetables and things, fruit. <clears throat> what good would it be if, if you were just a body here and, a, and, and the blood here and there wasn't a life in there? <clears throat> Wouldn't do any good. So you've got to watch it, that life. Now, if it wasn't, the chemistry had no life in itself and therefore it could not move. But when the life came into the chemistry of the blood, <clears throat> it formed a cell. It, for, it formed its own cell, then cell after cell. 
That'd be like a clone, almost. But you got to be careful there. Because Brother Van didn't say God cloned himself. He said took sperm and egg. See, he's got a difference there. So you watch these things. But it's along that line. <clears throat> and it became a man. And that man was God, Emmanuel, in flesh. Now he tells you what happened. See? The life in the blood brings forth children. Brings forth a lot of things. But you got to have that life in that blood. Or the blood itself is nothing. But the blood was shed to signify that your life was gone. <clears throat> it was the wrong kind of life. Animal life could not come back upon the believer. Now watch what he says here. But when that life returned back to chemistry, went into it. <clears throat> now the life didn't turn back, it returned. He doesn't have to use the word back, but he returned. <clears throat> the life returned. It had to have a chemistry. That's why your bodies are temples of the Holy Ghost. And you've got a life now that supersedes the life that's in your blood because you've got the life out of his blood. Amen. See, now you've got two in there. That's why your life and my life has got to be annihilated. <clears throat> it's got to go out of there. It's got to go down. Now, but the token is the Holy Ghost upon the church that they see Christ. <clears throat> Now, the other life makes people to see you and me. This new life should make people to see Christ. Amen. Then if the giver of life should come to the church, and that spirit be upon the church, that's the bride, <clears throat> through whatever way God wants it. Well, that's the sticker right there. Whatever way God wants it. Then they will see Christ. Now, there's lots of things in Scripture. Well, there's two particular. Number one, we start with every single member, male and female, Greek, Jew, Gentile, who cares? <clears throat> Color doesn't mean a thing. All right, right there, that person full of the Holy Ghost, that's very fine, and God can use that person. How? Whatever way God wants, gifts, manifestation, anything you want. <clears throat> then he's got a ministry, a five-fold ministry. <coughs> and they're gifted. So now you can see it again. And people say, that's fine. But when you come to the fact of a prophet, they say, forget it. <clears throat> and that's strange. Because that's how God always did it. Because your prophet is the highest order there is. People say apostle. No, no. The word prophet. The prophet of the word. Then apostles, prophets. That's a different order. You see? <clears throat> All right. They see Christ. If it's truly that token, that spirit, that life. Now, it has to be because a man, a woman and her husband become one. Now, you're back to uniting time. This is the hour of the mystical union of Christ and the bride. Now, my brother, sister, I want you to watch particularly here because <clears throat> he's playing almost the ends against the middle. That which comes through the ages, which is the individual baptism, to the baptizer at the end time. Which is the token can only come at the evening time. Oh, come on now. <clears throat> you mean everybody gets, it every, doesn't matter who it is, doesn't have to be born again? That's not the way I understand scripture. That's the way Brother Brandon talks to my knowledge. I went to him personally, in fact. <clears throat> Phoenix, Arizona, I said, Brother Brandon, I want you to go over this last chapter in the church age with me because... I said, you are not telling anybody that Luther and Wesley and those men of those ages did not have the Holy Ghost. He's by no means no. <clears throat> that people are saying, well, there's a true baptism. There is a true baptism, but it's not the baptism speaking in tongues and prophesying and coming out denying God, head and water baptism. Right. Amen. Amen. You see what I'm talking about? Same thing the prophet talked about. Amen. A true baptism with the Holy Ghost will say amen to every word a prophet made. Amen. And when you can't say amen, there's something wrong with you. You haven't got the spirit that's in that person. <clears throat> or the spirit that's from the spirit that's manifested. See? you got a manifestation there. I don't say re revere it and fall down. And Oh, I look at here. I'm going to tell you something. The Roman Catholic Church had that. <laughs> that bearing plaster cast images. Little tears rolling out of their eyes. <laughs> a couple, couple of foolish, couple not foolish but peculiar things. No, I'm not against them. It's just, it just doesn't, just doesn't tell you. I ain't got any prime for that. <clears throat> That's fine by me. Now, it has to be.
Because a woman and her husband become one. They become one, and so does the bride and Christ become one. The ministry of the bride and the ministry of Christ is the same. <clears throat> if it's a true bride, you bet it is. Sure. Now, you remember the former treatise of Theophilus I wrote to you that Jesus began to do and continues to do. Didn't say he continued to do, but he throws it into the future <clears throat> from the began to do, which future is our present. Amen. Not that he didn't do, but there's some things he could not do because it wasn't time to do them. Right, amen. Amen. I know people don't go for this, but that's fine by me. <clears throat> we're not talking to everybody, we're talking to you. Now, his death didn't stop him. No, sir, he returned again. Not a third person, but the same person turned back again, returned back in the form of the Spirit, and it continues to work on and continues on, said the book of Acts. And <clears throat> that is exactly true. There has been a continuing ministry. A portion of the Holy Spirit, a portion of the Word. <clears throat> Ministers. See? But there's a promise for the end time. Anyway, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. That is the token. That is the sign. <clears throat> All right? Very good. I want to ask you a question. What has Jesus Christ got to do being the same yesterday, today, and forever when it comes to, to the seven church ages and people being full of the Holy Ghost? Why do you say, <clears throat> if he was that, he would always be that, and of course from that, would come this Holy Ghost. Exactly right. But why does he prove it now if he didn't prove it back there? Why is it now? Why is it before the fire <clears throat> as Sodom and Gomorrah, he every single time takes his type in the Exodus? Either William Branham is a smart crackpot, <clears throat> a subtle devil, but he fails on all those counts because he didn't even make a ripple in the church. So he wasn't much of a deceiver. Amen. So let's get down to the fact that he was right. Amen. Vindicated by God. Amen. And I want you to get the picture here. He never took you back to Methodism or Pentecost or Luther or any place else when he hit this on the same yesterday day and forever. He took you specifically to Genesis 18. <clears throat> Amen. Right, man. And Exodus 12. <clears throat> Why? Well, you say, well, he was kind of not too smart. He's a pretty dumb guy, so he just had, didn't have many illustrations. Is that a fact? <clears throat> well, that's for them to say what they want to say. I can't buy that. But the whole thrust was Jehovah the Old and Jesus the New. <clears throat> and he took it back continually. Hallelujah. That this one here, Amen. back there, back okay. there. Glory to God. All right. When Peter and John passed through the gate called Beautiful, <clears throat> there laid a man who had been crippled, lame in his mother's womb. He said, Silver and gold have been none, such that I would give you the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. They talked to them and knew they were ignorant and unlearned men, and they took notice of them. They'd been with Jesus. See, the token was there displayed. See. <clears throat> Very good. The token was displayed. Fine. <clears throat> the men had ministries. Goes on. Such as I have seen a poor fallen brother laying there, crippled, disfigured, everything, the same life that was in Christ was in them, such as I have. Sure, in all three of them, Peter, James, and John, in all, in all this, the, uh, <clears throat> at the day of Pentecost, and all the 3,000 later, and all the 5,000 later, and then Paul, down the road later, all had the Holy Spirit. See, the token is laid there. <clears throat> Such as they have, seeing a poor fallen brother there, and so on. And then in my name, you'll cast out devils. Now watch. Not I will, you will. If you say this mountain, not if I say, if you say. <clears throat> now, where did that take place just now? So, you see, you can read this, you can read Brother Brown's sermon, you can hear it. And if you're still a good Pentecostal boy, or a good Baptist boy, or good whatever you are, <clears throat> you're just going to play it according to your understanding. You'll just stay right where you are, <coughs> spinning your wheel. Right. You're not going to get anywhere. It's just going to confuse you. <clears throat> but if you're going to understand the thrust of this word, the very person himself, God, Elohim, he called him. He said, that's who Abraham <clears throat> confronted. 
same one today. I see, I thought it was Jehovah. That's merely a, a name of relationship. <coughs> he could have a thousand compound titles on Jehovah. He wouldn't make him one thousand people. And he could revert any time he wanted to any one of those names or several names at one time. <coughs> see? All right. Oh, brother, the hour that the token is to be displayed is at hand. Amen. Now, you got to watch that one. We can see it. What's he talking about? Getting out of here. We know that we are near the end now for all kinds of messages up to show signs and wonders. Now, well, you know the, the, this refers to false anointed. <clears throat> I didn't preach false anointed until later on. This is 64. That was in 58. I mean, in, in, uh, in uh, 65. <clears throat> September, he preached false anointed. You get to, this was in rather 63, September 63. To, to just roughly two years later, he preached the uh, <clears throat> anointed one's end time. Yet he brings it right out here. All kinds of signs and wonders, all kinds of messages, all kinds of ideas. See? Now here we go back for what the church has got to do. The token has got to be displayed. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Nothing else would work. It must be the blood. <clears throat> now, what's he saying here? There is a token here in the person of Almighty God to lead us out. Amen. There is the baptism with the Holy Ghost that comes from that token, which is our token. Right. <clears throat> but that is the great token, the great giver of tokens that appears at the end time. Our token is a little tiny bit. <clears throat> now, we don't intend to go very far tonight. Now listen, you know my figures here I got out of a science magazine. Now we got scientists here, but I don't think they, they could uh, argue these figures because who keeps figures like this in mind if even knew them? Now the odds against any two individuals being born exactly like they're astronomical. Except for identical twins. Now, you know there's really no such thing as really true identical twins. But there's such a thing as looking and saying, hey, they're exactly like to look at. <clears throat> but you couldn't get anything perfectly exact. But it doesn't matter. Let's read the figures. There are more than 8 million ways the 23 chromosomes of a mother and the 23 of a father can combine. 8 million factors just there that could show up in that child. That's what lies in teensy-weensy chromosomes. Of which the male sperm, 15,000, goes across the diameter of one hair. And though the ova is much greater than sperm, <clears throat> they're much greater, you still got to take a microscope or almost a, a te large, good size telescope. Okay, turn it on. The odds against any two of their children having the same combination of chromosomes are about 70 trillion to one. On the world, 70 trillion. I don't even know what that looks like. <laughs> What's that, about 12 zeros? 13. I mean? Yeah, 12. Yeah. 13. And then they tell me, according to the British, that's not really true because a billion is much more to the British than they are to us. I don't know. <laughs> Coming out of Canada, I learned that. Yeah, that's right. There's a difference in the, in the, in the British. I think I need to got it under Googles or something. <coughs> they call it 70 trillion to one. In two little specks that cannot be seen unless under a high-powered microscope. Now they're actually there as though they were boxcars. You understand what I'm saying? Just as though they were elephants or boxcars or universes. They're just real and they're there. Amen. And every one of them with those combinations can produce exactly what this is saying here. And it boggles the mind. And since each chromosome may have 1,250 genes, the odd against two identical individuals reach a number so high as written with one followed by 9,031 zeros. <clears throat> now that's what I'm trying to get across to you. If that's in the human sperm and human egg, <clears throat> and that's all it takes to make a light, and that's there, I mean actually there, because it came from the sources. <clears throat> then what, what is in the individual from God? One drop of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Man, if the attributes in there are one followed by 9,000 zeros, what do you get in God or from God? Amen. And you still haven't got God. That's right. That's right. Amen. 
And that's what this whole thing is again about. And that's where I take my stand, what I believe Brother Branham was teaching. God, the entire, and then some. One followed by nine billion zeros. No, trillion. No, nine thousand. We'll get trillions because this is you being. <coughs> That's infinite. How are you going to figure it? Well, listen here, Brother Sitchell. One followed by nine thousand zeros is just as good as infinity. Any one of us just try and work it out yourself. Amen. Fact. <laughs> you <get> nowhere. <coughs> just as good. But when you have God standing there, see? So that's what we're trying to bring across tonight, which I believe the prophet is trying to show us. <clears throat> now, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. The blood was not the real thing. It stood for the real thing. Amen. Amen. Then so does one drop of the Holy Ghost stand for God himself. Amen. That's what we're looking at. <clears throat> see? Nothing else would work. It must be the blood. Now, the Holy Ghost is our token from God. As a great scholar, theologian, Baptist, brother, fine man, fine character, came to me one time, said, Brother Branham, he said, talk, you talking about the Holy Ghost. He said, why, that's nothing new. We've taught it all through the ages. I said, well, uh, he said, we received the Holy Ghost. I said, when you receive it? He said, when I believe. So I knew he said, I know Baptist theology. He'd say that. <clears throat> I said, then Paul said in Acts 19, a bunch of group of Baptists, which a Baptist minister had been one of John's converts, was proving by the Bible that Jesus was a Christ. When he passed through the upper coast, he found certain disciples said to him, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? I think that Dr. What's his name again? McCrossan. Great uh, uh, Presbyterian theologian that loved Dr. Price and believed in healing, believed in the Word of God. <clears throat> he said the literal translation of that is you want to pin it right down is uh, having believed, did you re have you received the Holy Ghost? You have to believe first. Right. Then you go down, you receive the Holy Ghost. They said, we do not know whether there be any Holy Ghost. Then he asked how they were baptizing, or how they were baptized. They hadn't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the sacrificial lamb. They were not identified with him at all. They just believed it, like the medicine sitting there and hadn't taken it. Paul commanded them to be baptized over again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he did this, then the token came upon them. <clears throat> in other words, God gave him himself. When God gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him, God does not per se give himself to them. That's only to a prophet. And in what measure only God and the prophet knows. That's right, amen. amen. But to you and me, it's no more than a drop of sperm. Amen. <coughs> That's all. Just don't, don't get... But remember, what's in it? Yes. Amen. See, I'm just trying to give you a human illustration here so you understand that you're not being sold short. Hallelujah. But it's very strange how people full of the Holy Ghost that they think they are, sure act as though they are God. Yeah. <laughs> Your little license is allowed there as a lead gate, but you better be careful how you take that <clears throat> because license is a horrible thing unless you pay the price. They were identified by the works and signs of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues through them, prophesying and magnifying God. Through seven church ages, that's fine. <clears throat> but that's not now. It'll go on right now. That's great. Fine. Nobody, not, nobody's against it. Nobody. No, no way, shape, and form. Just bear it out, prove it up, put in order, do what God said to do with it. Amen. After all, it's his gifts, it's not yours and mine. <clears throat> you know, well, the neighbor said, well, I, I tell you, you can use my car, I'll leave it in your garage, but, but do me a favor, just be careful, eh? You know, it's kind of like the kid that gets to use his dad's car and he wants to impress his girlfriend, so he lets on his car. <laughs> he was just that ridiculous with God, like they own God or something. Amen. It won't work. <clears throat> God owns the gifts. Amen. God owns everything. Amen. That's why there's, that's why Brother Branham set the church in order in that principle, and we've got to be very careful. All right, now look at They hadn't been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrificed lamb. <laughs> so Paul revealed the correct baptism, <clears throat> and the token came upon them. William Branham preached the correct baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit came to the church. Now, you'll notice in here the believing was not necessarily receiving. Because there are two kinds of believing. <clears throat> One's really believing, and one is just mental. Amen. If you get a real belief, you're going to go through with it. So you see, they just believed it in the sense it was something to them in the uh, mechanical. Like medicine sitting there, they hadn't taken it. But Paul commanded them to be baptized over again <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Christ. That opened the door. You talk about keys to the kingdom. You want a key to the kingdom? 
Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You walk right in. Well, that's the scripture. How can you beat the scripture? They were identified with their sacrifice. <clears throat> now they weren't before. See? <clears throat> there was a sacrifice and the life had left it. The, the life had propitiated and the blood now covered. All sin is wiped out. <clears throat> but you've got to have the life. Let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And we'll see that. It says, for by one offering, verse 14, that perfect it forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness. That's the other words, Brother Brown said, the blood of Jesus Christ perfects the bride. It says right here. Whereof the Holy Ghost is a witness to us. For after that he also said, before this account of, <clears throat> I'll make with him in those days, said the Lord. I'll put my law in their hearts and so on. Now, I don't know what that all means. I haven't checked it out. <clears throat> See what Brother Brown said about it. But there's one thing we can rest assured here, <clears throat> that the covenant, as Brother Brown has said, is null and void unless you have the token. Okay, I told you the covenant that God gave Abraham. Genesis 15, 13, 14. I'm going to put them down in Egypt or some other country. They'll be oppressed. I'm going to bring them up. He had a covenant. But that covenant was abrogated without the blood. So therefore, those who say, I received the Holy Ghost when I believe, have abrogated the covenant. <clears throat> See? Brother, the word of Jesus himself said, you have made void my commandments by your tradition. You've annulled every promise. Those who do not come in line with the revealed word of God at this hour, talk of the rapture all they want. They have voided the promise of the rapture. Now that's the Bible. And God's indication of it. <clears throat> now, they have identified their sacrifice. And the Holy Ghost is our identification. It is what identifies us as Christians, not our membership in churches, or not our understanding of the Bible, not how much you know about the Bible, it's how much you know about the author, or how much he changes it, how much the author is living in you. <clears throat> See, this is why I know the Bible. I follow that word. I do this. And that's certainly they can. Some are tremendous at it. I won't argue. But is, is Christ within? Now, it is yourself gone. You're no more. You reckon yourself dead. And the token is what lives in you. And it is not your life, it is he. Paul said the life I now live. He lived a different life from once he once did. It is not I, <clears throat> but Christ lives in me. <clears throat> That's Galatians 2 and 20. That also confirms God in you willing and do his good service. Also the stature of perfect man. See, those, those virtues in, the, in us, they're born into us by the Holy Spirit. We don't say, well, I, I just think I'll go out and get me some, some faith and get me some virtue and get me some brotherly kindness and I'll go out and get me some temperance and I'll go out and get me some of this and that and everything. Well, you could, you could really do that. <clears throat> you could do it by just <clears throat> taking a little psychological bath or a little psychological input. <clears throat> sure. A little experience. Like that boy I told you about. He had a terrible time with himself, I guess, temper and what have you until he prayed to God and he got oil in the, on his hands and that did it. Now you tell me what oil in your, oil in your hands. I had to, with a mechanic, he'd be the most blessed man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong, brother, sister. Something, something radically, and I said with that my joke on purpose. <clears throat> radically wrong. There is the identified token that God required. What's the identified token? The Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, does it mean identified? Is this identified? Not necessarily. See? It means God identifies that as what you're to have. Amen. You're to have something, this, something, that. God, God said, well, I'm going to tell you what I want you to have. And this is it. And when I see it, that's it. <clears throat> see? Amen. Now, there is the identified token that God required. Identified with their sacrifice. Now you see, back in Israel's time, <clears throat> they were identified, but not like we are. That life couldn't come upon them. But now the life can come back on us. The life of our Savior in us. The Holy Spirit. Oh, what positive token. There cannot be any more token. Now that sounds like strange language. There cannot be any more token. Well, sure. That's true. <clears throat> Look at this way. What greater thing? There's nothing greater. So well, I, I, think I, I think maybe that that sounds all right, but you know, those crazy Pentecostals, they, they talk about talking in tongues. They know they're all crazy. Well, they climb walls and everything else. They lie on the floor and kick their feet in the floor and they froth them out and try to... We've been all through that. I mean, we've been accused, I've been accused of that myself. 
<clears throat> no one ever frothed him out yet. Never climbed a wall. He <laughs> wasn't experienced. <laughs> never did roll either. Although that's fine for pure joy. A kid you can roll downhill. If you're very ecstatic. Lots of things you do. <clears throat> see? Oh, see, I wouldn't have that. No, no way, no way. That, that's crazy. Shows where they're at. See? <clears throat> Nothing to them. See? Now it tells you <clears throat> that no matter what you put your faith and trust in, there cannot be any token other than this token. And furthermore, since this was given, there's nothing will ever take its place. <clears throat> How could it? You mean to tell me the first church age, full of the Holy Ghost, the next, the next, the next, right down the line? They all got to receive the Holy Ghost. So once this was given, this was it. That's why it says the earnest of your inheritance and you're sealed into the day of redemption. See? No matter what happens. When it comes resurrection time, there is going to be a resurrection period and God's spirit is on every cell. Even though it disagreed, went back to gas. It doesn't matter. See? <clears throat> Nothing else will do. Not a thing. Oh my. If you could only catch the thought of it. Now listen, if I had the power this morning with words to express and place into your souls, that is not your ears, but your soul. If you should see the guarantee of it, it makes you so relaxed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> see? Amen. Now I said, if I could just get you to see this, and then you receive it. Now look, the, look at brother and sister, the check was out. Oh, here's an Israelite. And he said, well, he said that stuff he said about the blood of the Lamb. Now he wasn't a very good Israelite, he was a mixed multitude. He had like he, several grandmothers that were all Egyptian women. And uh, maybe an uncle or two Egyptian men thrown into the bargain. <clears throat> well, I think myself, all he wants is blood. We'll just get the blood of the rooster. I'm not going to kill that lamb. That lamb's been my favorite little pet. I've had that lamb for, you know, I'm just not going to get rid of that lamb. He looks like he'd make a fine sheep. I'll have more sheep out of that one. So we'll just take the blood of the rooster. <clears throat> that wouldn't work. <clears throat> no way at all. Amen. It wasn't going to work. Amen. See, well, so I say I might try something else. No, it's not going to work. See, it can't. Because, you see, that is the guarantee. See, it's got to be the Spirit of God, that little microcosm, <clears throat> little thimbleful, whatever you want to call it, from the God's great inf infinite ocean. And he said, when I see that, it checks right back. See, now a person going by the door, he couldn't fool a death angel. Amen. But you can fool somebody else. Say, what is that, rooster blood or is that uh, gland blood? Maybe he couldn't tell. Like Mary Baker already said, there's no more efficacy in the blood of Jesus Christ than the blood of a rooster. She knows by now she lied. <laughs> she knows by now, and all, her, and all her friends with her are going to find out too. Because you can't blaspheme God. Amen. Now, you might forgive her because they say she was an epileptic, insane person. Well, that's possible. So we'd be gracious and say maybe she'll make it on the grounds of <clears throat> What about her followers? And you think God can't tell his own life? You know what? I'm going to tell you something. Of all the world's creation, man is the stupidest. <laughs> Even a penguin can tell which egg is hers. <laughs> God himself said, the birds of the air can follow a special way they know it, and the ox that knows these masters give my people, he said, he ain't got nothing. The man thinks he can have something different from what God said he's supposed to have. There's no way, brother, sits in there. Here's the beautiful thing of identification. <clears throat> you know today you can have part of that spirit that gave his picture. Amen. Part of that God that categorically came down here in the form of a pillar of fire and vindicated by the way he has always done it through a prophet. So he had a perfect outreach. <clears throat> we have a perfect commitment from him and a perfect commitment to him. Now, he said, it makes you so relaxed. Let's, let's look at that relaxation. I've given this many times. It's never, never too many times, you know, when you got the Word of God. It says over here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, he said here, seeing it's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled with us, relax. You're the trouble to relax with us when the, when, when the Lord Jesus Christ shall be revealed in heaven with his mighty angels, just like over here. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Came down as a judge. Set the thing in motion. Judgment's already in the earth. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so there you are. See, now he said, relax. <laughs> Why? Because you've identified. 
That takes you to Mount Carmel with Elijah. Let the real God, who God be God, he said, if Baal's God, fine, worship him. If God's God, worship him. Let's find out who's God. <clears throat> so they found out who was God. We're in the same boat right today, the same position. What if you had committed a crime? You're going to be tried in the federal court, and you know they found you guilty. What are you going to do? And you're going to die. You're going to the lecture chair, gas chamber, whatever public execution they had, whatever the penalty was. You knew you're guilty. You knew you were guilty. You must die. If you don't get some attorney to represent you, who can get you out of this thing? Now you want the best attorney you can have. Then getting an attorney was a good, shrewd attorney. You would feel your case was a little bit better. You could relax a little bit because you had an attorney. But still there'd be the question whether this attorney could change the judge's idea or change the jury. If this attorney with his shrewd speaking and knowing of the law could change that and could plead your case and prove that you should live. But yet in all of his great authority and the great speech that he could make and the impression he could put upon the jury or have the judge, maybe you'd get relaxed for a few minutes. <clears throat> but still there'd be the question, can he do it? But in this case, the judge himself has taken our turn. God became man. There was no attorney could do it. We couldn't find one. Moses and the law and prophets, nothing could do it. In other words, you can't find anything about it's going to get you off the hook. Right. <clears throat> See, there's no way because the original said, if you eat, you die. See? And he... <coughs> so, the judge became both jury, attorney, and judge himself and took the justice of his law in his own hands and paid the price of it himself. How much more secure could we be and send his own life back upon us as a witness that he has accepted it? God accepted the sacrifice and the Holy Spirit coming back upon you and me proves that the sacrifice was not only accepted by God, but that we accepted it and he accepted us. Amen. So it becomes a complete cycle, a <clears throat> circle. Send his own life upon us as a witness to that he has accepted. How safely, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow, I will turn you without with me. In other words, the lamb rose, as I mentioned to you before, <clears throat> became uh, his executor, his own executor of his own estate to see that we'd get it. <clears throat> Kept it right in his hands. Nobody else could do it. He alone could do it, and he's doing it for us. <clears throat> he's the great redeemer. Now, what's he done? Took the book out of the hands of the one on the throne, the Holy Spirit in the throne. Ripped the seals off, put the put the book back, the redemption, climbed on the throne. That Holy Spirit came down here, right there, there, there. <clears throat> the book of redemption. And we, hearing that word, received the gospel call and knew our names were called. Amen. Yeah. See, there was a calling, first of all, say, come in, come in. Then there's a calling by a name. Now, if your name had not been on that book, you wouldn't have heard that call. Because the sheep hear the call. Amen. And it's a lamb's book of life. And the name is on the lamb's book of life. So when a call goes for the lamb, you answer because your name is on it. And he called your name by the word. Amen. <clears throat> sure, the gospel. Brother, brother, sister, that's true. I'll say so. Not, not in the many words is that, but that's the way it is. <clears throat> you see? Now, when he becomes both judge, jury, and attorney, he pleaded our case, pleaded our case. We found, we found guilty by his own law, and he came and took the guilty person's place that was in the sanctuary. He took his sin, took it upon himself, died, paid the price, shed his blood, and gave back his own token, <clears throat> his own life. <clears throat> now, let's understand that God is Redeemer. God is Savior. He said, there's no Savior beside me. Well, then there's no Redeemer beside me. Then God does not delegate anything to anybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he does it as well. Now, that's the thing you and I have got to come to understand. Not just here, although we got it here. We've got to pray and believe God that somehow this is going to inflame our very souls until that's all we know. My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Amen. Everything wrapped up in him. <clears throat> because he did not get a substitute. He was the substitute. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why I see all this talk about three gods in heaven. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and the Father creates Adam and Eve and makes all this world. And lets the devil loose. Like I've said years and years ago. 
sovereignty of God. Here's a man, he owns a, he owns a, a, a pipe on our boat constrictor. And he says, I just think I, maybe I'll put this little pussy cat in where my boat constrictor is, for the pipe on. And next morning, no pussy cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor little pussy cat. What happened to you anyway? As though he didn't know. Now you're going to tell me a sovereign God doesn't know many, many things that you and I perhaps don't want him to know or think he shouldn't know or can't know. <clears throat> All of the plan of redemption was in him because he's a redeemer. And Brother Bram explained how it was unbecoming to God for a son to fall so a woman is no nothing against the woman was not in the original creation and thereby became a trap. And God took her down and said, this is the one that's going to cause you to fall if you fall. He went right on and did it anyway. So when God, that was free moral agency right there. <clears throat> Adam trapped himself. He blew it. What did God do? Came right down. The creator now becomes <clears throat> the great redeemer, the great keeper. The great shepherd, the great everything. That's exactly why you have the Spirit of God given to you in a measure. Where it says he given not the measure of the Spirit to Christ without measure. He gave Moses a measure. Seventy people volunteered, or Moses wanted to help him in judging and doing work. He took the Spirit off of Moses, gave it to seventy, and I bet you there's more left on Moses than in the seventy. You better believe it. And God wasn't diminished. <clears throat> That's what we're trying to say. So what does God do? There's no more surety than God himself, and only God can recognize God. That's right. You may think we can, but it's only because God gives a channel to recognize. <clears throat> so that's a great token. There's a part of God himself. Why we're perfect. The case is dismissed. There is no more sin to the believer. The blood makes him perfect. The Holy Spirit gives him a robe, makes him perfect. Oh, God have mercy. If the people can't see that, that there is no more case. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life, eternal life, and shall not come to him, but is passed from death to life. <clears throat> there is the case. What case? The case against you. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me. And you can't believe unless you're a dean. Amen. See, for as many <clears throat> as believe were a dean, that's what it says in Acts the 13th chapter, they were dangerous. There's no case. There is, there is a case. That's it. Your case dismissed. No more case to it. Amen. Then safely. Safely with the token applied. When death begins to smite against the door, it has no control. Yes, the token is applied. Only the token is recognized now. He did that so that the token could come. It might be he died, but I don't know. I didn't check it out. <clears throat> the token was God's life. And when God made the first man, he made him a son. And the son was so corrupt, he listened to his wife instead of God. The woman listened to the devil instead of her husband. And when they did, it so corrupted them together, it brought a pollution. And he knew that when they did that, they would have to bring children into the world. The fruit in the midst of the tree could not be touched. And then when it was, they brought this sin upon themselves. Therefore, the whole human race that was born was in sin. There was no way to come out. Then God came down. There is only one way to get him back. That's to get him back a son again. How can he do it when his own law stood there and he said he is condemned? Then the Father himself became one of us. That is the real lamb. That is the purpose he had in mind. <clears throat> that is the reason the lamb was so identified in the Garden of Eden, knowing that the, the lamb and dove would meet at one time when the lamb and dove would be together. When we all see that, we can all be together. And he was willing to make such a sacrifice. <clears throat> now, Listen, he's talking in the live line here. We discussed about chemistry. <clears throat> now, look, God is spirit, and he is not chemistry per se, although there's, don't think that the spirit is not chemistry in the sense the spirit is not real. Spirit is real, 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 real. The things which aren't real are those things out there. Touch, taste, touch, taste smell, feel, and so on. See? <clears throat> the real stuff, like the inner man that perishes not, the outer man is going. Now, here's God. He's centrally intrinsically God, Holy Spirit. Now, he's got to do something for man that he's made flesh and blood. Now, he made a he made man spirit-like. Then he made a chemistry. I like that terminology. He made the chemicals, he made a form. But just use the fact that that's a good term. He made a chemistry. I think Brother Bannon did a, a perfect job in one word, <clears throat> as you know, to get a whole treatise. So, all right. He's got man now in a chemistry. Got him in a form. 
Now, this man must be redeemed. And he's got to be redeemed body, soul, and spirit. Because man is an earth creature. His roots may have been in heaven, but his feet are on earth, and they're going to stay there. Now, you may think different, but i got news for you. We're all coming back. Amen. Provided Amen. we go away. <laughs> Come right back here. <clears throat> in a glorified form. It'll always be that way, see? Amen. Now, God starts with himself. Now, he's got all of these attributes, which are more than 9,000 zeros. They're 9 trillion zeros. All that lies in God. <clears throat> now, what's he going to do? The same as he did with you and me. He reduces the, the, the attributes that are in the spirit to a, a very old, infinitesimal form, <clears throat> minute form. And he forms a chemistry form. In other words, he makes a body form. Now, that's all that he did when he, when he became a man. <clears throat> so, therefore, as Brother Branham said in another, I think uh, Christ reviewed his own word, that the body is so much God that it's a part of God. Well, it certainly is a part of God. Amen. It certainly is. See? <clears throat> now, he's got a chemistry, as he says, that the life may be in. Now, that body, literally then, is the body of God, the body that was prepared. Now, down there in the River Jordan, Almighty God can come in, and now you've got complete God manifesting human flesh. Amen. Remember, all the attributes of Godhead were in Christ bodily. Amen. The same as in you life, all the attributes of your parents, whether you know it or not. <clears throat> that's, I think I've my little theories about some of those things, and I may, I, to me they're tremendous when you begin to realize just what all lies there. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> God came down, and he came down, as I have described, through that human structure. And when the blood was shed, it was a far superior blood to a human blood because man was not even human anymore. Right. No, right. he's mixed up. Mm -hmm. right. And this life was superior to any form that God ever made because it's a new one. Remember, there's the man from heaven, there's a the man from earth, they're different. All right, now when he died upon Calvary, the blood was shed. And you got the chemistry lying there, that's fine. But the life came out of it. Now, that life paid the price of death, the shedding of blood, to remit every single sin and make that fallen son and daughter so perfect by the blood that the Spirit of God could come in and say, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> With that, you have a high priest. The same one. All of these things conspire to show you that God has placed us back where we were in the beginning and even beyond there. Because I've said many times that Adam and Eve were innocent, but they weren't righteous. You and I are not innocent, but we are righteous, which is far greater. Now, God has done that. Now, brother, sister, listen, all this thing hinges upon one thing, and that is whether you and I have been baptized with the Holy Ghost whether you and I have a little bit of the light that came down here at this end time. Now see, there's your perfect positive identification. You have your Mount Carmel showdown, Brother Sitcher, whether you want to admit it or not. Amen. <clears throat> You've got it. Yeah. You can serve the gods of this world, the denomination, the organization. You can do what you want. Be my guest. I've got no control of you. I'm not going to try to ride herd on you. I see face tonight I've never seen before, at least one. <clears throat> that doesn't mean a thing to me. I don't want to try to get you in my roots and your roots and mine, your way, mine, mine, and yours. No way, shame, form. Not interested. I would trust that you would see what I'm saying and believe perhaps what I believe. But I'm not, I'm not pressing for that. I'm merely here witnessing to people and teaching people that <clears throat> how we see this thing, this so great thing that happened in our day. Amen. Now he said here, when his own law stood there and said he's condemned. Then the Father himself became one of us. That's the real lamb. That's the purpose he had in mind. That's the reason the lamb was identified in the Garden of Eden. Knowing that the lamb and dove would meet at one time. <clears throat> it's true. The sacrifice given the human instrumentality of God in the human form would bring forth the life of God. Amen. When we all see that, we can all be together. And he was willing to make such a sacrifice. In other words, when you can see what God really did, and you receive it, <clears throat> knowing that 
When you seek God for the Holy Spirit, you're seeking for the identified one. That hasn't been, brother, for six ages. Sure identified in the sense of the word. I agree with that. God never left himself that witness in people. But you never saw this. Amen. This is evening time. <laughs> Brother Brown said the token could not come in, to, <clears throat> come in till the evening time. I think in one place, he, I'm not sure he said existence. I doubt that he said existence. Unless he meant it could only come in this period of existence. Because that token always existed. But it could not exist for the church until this time. Why? Because he compared it to going out time. And it is going out time by the grace of Almighty God. <clears throat> now that the token could be applied, that we're no more aliens, no more strangers, but we're sons and daughters of God, both Adam and Eve, the woman and man, joined together our sons and daughters of God in Jesus Christ by his great sacrifice. That's true. Why by the sacrifice? You don't get joined by sacrifice, but because of a sacrifice. Amen. The of so then there, that there would be, so then, then, so there would be no mistake, the seed of this life, that must be planted in the earth of this body. That's a perishable seed. In other words, he said there's a seed that's going to come to this perishable body. It <clears throat> already has a perishable seed in it. See? And the life, if it's a perverted life in the seed, it perishes with the seed. He's trying to tell you something. Look, the second death's ahead of you. If you're not born again, you're gone. If you're not identified, you're gone. Now look, the church doesn't want this. And there are people amongst us don't want this. No, they don't. You don't identify simply with a message, brother, sister. Everybody's got a message. You identify with a messenger. <clears throat> the Lord himself descended with a shout, which was a message. Not just a message. No way. Brother Brown said that was just a voice. Wasn't what I knew. Just the voice. You got a perverted life? I got one. We're born that way. There's something wrong. When the Spirit of God comes in, it's not wrong any longer because the blood is covered. The Holy Spirit proves it's covered. It proves you're part of that sacrifice. Now it proves you're part of God. Right? Because the Holy Spirit's in there. And God says, I see that. What do you seen that without the blood? The identification? No way. The life has come back. The man stands there perfect. See? But he put eternal life into it. You and me. Identified his own. <coughs> but in the resurrection, he'll raise it up again. Sure, we could die. Nothing could be lost. You see what I mean? There it is. It cannot perish now. That life lays over it. It's a token. Lies over that little body. Lies over that soul of that person. There is a token over there, the Holy Spirit that belongs to God. It's his. He didn't say it was God. It belonged to God. Follow? Amen. There's a difference here, brothers and sisters. Long to God, it's His. When I see the token, I'll pass over you. A positive token. <clears throat> no doubt. The Holy Spirit's our token. Therefore, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you pass from death to life. That is all there is to it. Don't try to stretch it this way, pull back that way. That's all there is to it. Don't add, don't take, because life is in you. You can no more perish. All right? What's it going to do at the end time? There's going to come a people who can't die either. Amen. Not just raise them up at the end time, but never perish. Immortality sweeps in upon the scene, according to Malachi, the fourth chapter. The Bible said, He that is born of God does not commit sin, for he cannot sin for the seed of God. Amen. The seed of God remains in him. How can he sin when the sinless God is with him? When he is in a sinless God, how can he sin? Now notice how he's putting this whole thing in there, because Christ is in you and you're in Christ. No matter what he has done, the blood covered him. He's a new creature now. His desires and ambitions are heaven because he chained the cock of her to weep. In other words, the way he lived. His desires aren't the same as they once were. Sure. And he displays it. You say, oh, I believe that. You're still sinning? My, you're deceived. <clears throat> you can't display anything but the token. <clears throat> now, you say, well, I, Brother brown has got us down to works program now. He's got us down to where he's denying the very fact that fruit is not the evidence of the Holy Ghost. He's denying now that love is not the evidence. Oh, no, it's not. No way, shape, and form. He's telling you right here, it's, in, it's, a, it's a hope. He said, he said, how can you say you've got the Holy Ghost and be an unbeliever? 
Yeah. I'm believing sin. How can you say you got the Holy Ghost and just believe what God's doing and where they are? Amen. See, brother, since you've got to put the whole thing together, you're not living in Pentecost Amen. anymore. You're not living with Western Ruth. You're living now. Yes. What's going on now? What is God doing now? Yes. <clears throat> What's behind this? Amen. Well, I can tell you one thing. What Luther, Wesley, and Pentecost has isn't this. Right. Not was that years ago, not the pillar of fire. Right. Just the baptism. That's not this. <clears throat> it's all over. It's a new message. New word. It's end time when light only shines in Goshen. The plague of death is Hallelujah. ready to fall. Now the thing is this, listen. If you bleed, really with all your heart, Baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ positively brings the token. No evidence of sensations and feelings and this and that. But you know that you know. Amen. Why? Because the evidence is already there. You don't take an evidence when you've got an evidence. That's ridiculous. That's trying to take aspirin and make the aspirin work you already took. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a thought in a way. But you can't get something to make this work. When this already has proven itself, what do you want? Amen. That's what he's trying to show the people here. Now, don't turn that down and say, well, I sure I agree with that. Go all the way. What is he here for? Yes. Amen. <laughs> he's here for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's here for me. See, that's the whole thing. And you believe. Then what's the next step? Well, the next step is you believe every word and say amen. And then from that time on, it's a striving to get out of the way. Yes. Hallelujah. That'd be glorified. Amen. Sometimes it's difficult, sometimes not. It all depends what God wants of you. But that's it. Now, that's as far as we're going to go tonight. We've gone perhaps farther than I intended to go, <clears throat> but that's as far tonight. Now, we'll continue perhaps next Sunday. But you get the picture, brother, sister. This goes in two parallels. Don't ever forget it. <clears throat> but just as sure as you're alive, you're going to draw a wrong conclusion somewhere down the line. But here's a man at the end time, looking back through the ages, watching carefully, and putting you right here where you belong. You stay where you belong even though he looks back through the ages. Because the Negro brother, sister, goes way up high. And I want to tell you something. The higher he gets, the better he can look down. And the higher he gets, the better he can look up. Amen. You and I are not in that category. But we can bore his eyes. A great preacher one day preached a sermon. Nazarene preaches, I see through the eyes of the dead. A woman died and left her cornies for a transplant. And, he, and for the first time, this man could see saw his wife and his children and saw people around about him. And he said, I see through the eyes of the dead. We see through the eyes of the prophet. Right. By the grace of Almighty God, let's rise to this time. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, we're about to go on now to the service of the...